Hey everybody! Welcome back. This is Northern Lion. I'm playing The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Maybe you've heard of this game. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you have. You know what? I'm going to do an Isaac run here. Because we've done an Azazel run. That was our random run. We've done an Eden run. Now it's time to do an Isaac run. Maybe I'll, like, rotate in other characters. Because it seems like I'm not going to run the math here. But it really feels like... There's a seed, by the way, in case you're listening not looking at the screen. But you want it. You got two seconds, too. Why I lied to you? You only had one second. Um... You know what? Let's try this. May actually end up working. Maybe we get Cricket's Head. Or two bombs, which is still a pretty good return on our investment there. Um, like, very few other characters are going to end up getting played if we go Eden, Isaac, Random. But it, it should be like, I don't know. It, it, I don't want to play all the other characters that much. I want to play Eden, like, all the time, and I want to play Isaac occasionally. And then everybody else will just sprinkle in as is necessary, you know? I'm starting to think of, of Isaac a little bit less as like, a, I've got to play everyone in order. Although that was fun when we did that for like 100 episodes. but um, And a little bit more like, uh, almost like Dota 2 or something like that. Or League of Legends where you're like, I've got this hero that I really like. Or this champion that I really like. And we're going to play the shit out of it until I go into a different phase. But we'll, we'll try to keep it uh, interesting with the randoms at the very least. Okay. Don't ever come over here, spider, and think that you're going to start shit in my house. You look, I may not be super potent right now, but one of these days, I'm telling you, Proptosis, first room, item room. And then we'll just be set for life. Speaking of Proptosis, we didn't get that on the last run. We got it two runs ago. That was a pretty nice little bit of uh, damage there, game. I'll give you that. Golden key, not immediately useful, but maybe we'll at least be able to access our shop if we want to. And notched F and axe. I'll tell you what, I should have used notched axe on this room right here and cracked all these rocks open. That's a little bit of a lazy uh, misplay. Not lazy because I thought about it and then just didn't do it, but lazy because I was like, I don't like it, reroll. I didn't give myself a chance to, to think, you know? A failure to plan is a plan to fail. And I planned to, or I failed to plan for, you know, giving myself just a brief extra second there to look at things. The question now becomes, you know, do I want to go to that shop and blow up the donation machine to try to get a little bit of money. And honestly, the answer is no. I might go to the shop anyway in case there's an amazing item. I can't think of what that amazing item would necessarily be. But like Mom's Key or something like that. If there was Mom's Key in there. Uh, and I could blow up the donation machine twice and get enough money. Humbling Bundle would be another example, I guess. If I could blow up the donation machine twice and get the amount of money necessary, that would be fine. Look, I'm not proud of the damage that I took against the Widow there. But it doesn't matter that much. What we should probably do, it doesn't matter that much on this floor, I should say. What we should probably do instead is, let's try to do it this way. Three cents? No. Now we will go to the shop, and we will use our last remaining bomb to blow up... Well, we might not need to. We're going to need to. I'll blow up our donation machine and this man in the middle. Could have just done the man in the middle, and maybe could have done neither, because we just got the uh, secret room as well. But then that way I can pick up uh, a spirit art to protect our deal with the devil interest on the next floor. And oh, by the way, we now have the ability to fly. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. One cent shy of being able to get to, uh, of being able to get to a guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, but guaranteed chance <laughs> of, uh, of a blood bank via the arcade. Guaranteed chance is kind of a little bit of an oxymoron, I guess. But anyway, that's like the, the like some human psychology shit they used to sell you on, you know, buying a lottery ticket. Yo, if you buy a ticket, there's a guaranteed chance you could win, man. The only way you can guarantee your chance of winning is by buying a ticket today. We are, you know, humans are amazing creatures, but also so dumb. We know it, though. I mean, that's the first step, isn't it? You think dolphins, you know, everyone says dolphins are super smart, but are dolphins smart enough to know that they're not actually smart at all? And that, you know, all knowledge is transient in the face of the fact that we'll be worm food one day? <laughs> I'm not actually, like, really a nihilist, but I really like dismissing people's complaints by just saying, eh, we'll be dead one day anyway. Like, what do you want for lunch, Ryan? They'll be like, uh, make KFC. They're like, oh, I'm not going to eat KFC. That's gross. So I'll be like, well, we're all going to be dead one day anyway. So don't get too bent out of shape about it. What do you want to have for lunch? Pizza Hut? Sure, that's fine. I mean, it's all food for worms one day anyway. People don't talk to me much anymore. I don't have I don't have many friends. Guaranteed deal with the devil as far as I'm concerned, though. So that's all I need. Really buffing up our damage here with Jesus Juice. And on the last floor, we got uh, Cat of Nine Tails. And truth be told, I'm not actually that concerned about fighting Krampus right here. We got the damage necessary to handle them easily. Gemini's helping out quite a lot. And we're going to get some improvement here. Not in the form of that, but we'll reroll that. Get Book of Belial. You know what? 
You know what? You know what? Yes. I, th it's such a tough decision for me because I really, really do love the D6. And the reason I want to play Isaac is to have the D6. However, um, the Book of Belial is just so good. The fact that it gives you those guaranteed deals with the devil. And we really haven't had... Uh, well, now I wish we kept the D6. But um, we really haven't had that great uh, D6 run in quite some time here. Nor have we had a good deal with the devil run in quite some time, so it's, you know, it's conflict for me. I was thinking something weird. I was like, can we go back in here, get the D6, reroll Doctor's Remote, like get the D6, buy a battery, reroll Doctor's Remote, then come back in for Book of Belial? And at first it seems like a master plan, and you might be saying, well, why didn't you do it then? Well, the reason I decided against it is because I don't actually think it was a master plan. I think after I had the D6, I would lose my chance of getting back into the deal with the devil. With Book of Belial, I can kind of come and go as I please, but um, with the D6, as soon as I picked it up, I think I'd lose my wallet. As soon as I left after picking it up, I think I would lose my chance. So, it might have been, first off, not only might it have worked, but it might have been the best possibility, even if it didn't work. However, um, I chose not to do it to stick with Book of Belial. We got kind of like a hybrid Isaac Judas run going on right here. Book of Belial, obviously a great item. Uh, arguably, the best space bar item in the game, I think. I think you can make a pretty reasonable case for uh, for the Book of Belial actually being amazing. Well, I mean, people know it's amazing, but like being the most amazing. It's either that or the D6, honestly. Everything else that, that you know people cite, I think, usually comes down to being situationally useful, but not always uh, truly incredible. Like Blank Card. Blank Card, Chaos Card, Blank Card, Yara Rune. That shit is amazing. But it doesn't really do all that much for you if you have, like, blank card, you know, the tower or something like that. Still okay. Sort of. <laughs> for future prospects, at least. But uh, just for itself, not really. Alright. We're going to have probably enough money to take a crack at the shop on this floor. But it's not uh, my predominant interest. A little bit ahead of the curve time-wise. Ability to fly is obviously amazing, and you know, if I can't call this a one run on its own merits yet, but based on how far ahead of the curve we are, we can probably say it's a one run. You know, if you're like eight years old and you've skipped two grades, it's it would be irresponsible to say, oh, they're a successful person. I mean, actually, they're going to be a, it would be irresponsible to say like their future is guaranteed, but it would also be just wrong to say that that's not pretty fucking impressive, right? You know, if you're eight years old and in like sixth grade, you'd be like, that, that kid is pretty smart. They're probably a little bit ahead of the curve. Got some Jonathan Lipnicki style precociousness associated with him. Did you know the human head weighs 10 pounds? Excuse me. There we go. I was always more of a, a Taj Mori type of smart guy uh, aficionado. Less of a Jonathan Libnicki, more of a Taj Mori, but I know that perhaps I might be in the, the minority on that one. Really loving these hematomesis pills. I would be stupid if I didn't blow that one up. Alright, I mean, it did end up being very nice for us, but it wasn't the cricket's head that I was necessarily expecting. I mean, you ever get that vibe? I got the vibe for that Taj Mori was kind of like a genuine kid. Jonathan Libnicki... It struck me, and this is totally unfair because he was like nine. This is me projecting. But whenever I saw Jonathan Libnicki, even as a kid myself, I was like, I bet he's an asshole. <laughs> I bet he's a total bastard to his, you know, cast members and crewmates. So we bought Pandora's box, uh, which effectively led to us paying 15 cents just to get uh, a speed or a shot speed and a speed upgrade. Not really that amazing. Look, I love the sun card. I'm going to take the Chaos card, though. It's just a little better. Uh, like, offensively, obviously. I just have these, like, mental pictures. If you don't know who Jonathan Libnicki is, he's the kid from Jerry Maguire. He was the kid in a lot of different things. Effectively, he is the kid, you know? He, a young, like, blonde child who has diction well beyond his age. This is a sentence that's very uncomfortable to say, by the way. Let's see what we're going to do here. Peep is good enough, I think, to use the Chaos card against. I don't fancy saving it forever when we can actually bring the Sun card with us. And there's our deal with the Devil. You know that Christian Bale, like, embarrassing thing where he yells at a sound guy? I kind of feel like that's, uh... Like Jonathan Nicky's offstage and someone is like, Hey, uh, Mr. Lib... Like a 35-year-old guy who's worked in Hollywood for like 15 years. is like, Hey, Mr. Libnicki, can I get you uh, an apple juice? He's like, Why don't you give me some Crystal, you fucking bitch? 
My mom says you have to do whatever you tell me to do. I'm in Jerry Maguire. You can't even spell Jerry Maguire, you piece of shit. My teacher warned me about... I don't know. Like, It's so unfair to, to judge a, a child actor just based on the fact they are a child actor. But didn't you ever get that kind of douchebaggy vibe from a nine-year-old Jonathan Libnicki? All I'm trying to say is I hope that he's, you know, changed his ways recently. Let's head down to the next floor. Uh, deal with the Devil obviously didn't turn out to be that amazing. If, if, if Jonathan Lipnicki is wanting this, he should do, like, a fictional, like, an extras Ricky Gervais-style TV show about a fictional version of him. Because I'm sure, I mean, I'm not sure he's totally nice. That would be irresponsible to say as well, because I don't know, he might be a total dick. However, if he is a, a nice and, and genuine person, as I, you know, I expect there's a good chance that he is, he should do a show where he plays, like, the parent of a child actor who's just a total dick, but nobody wants to say anything to them. Not just because they're a child actor, but because they're, like, nine. It's like a, there's a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode in there somewhere where, you know, Larry David yells at a child actor because they're being an asshole and is like, you know, you think you're a big shot, but you're, you're not, actually. And then people get mad at him because you're like, Why, what are you doing saying that to, like, an eight-year-old? You fucking psycho? You, you can try it. Larry David, if you're watching this, you uh, you do something better with your time. You know, you got you got other stuff to do. But thank you. It's very flattering. We're going to be at six keys here, which uh, is, you know, roughly the right number for me to be like, Guppy's tail will be flipping sweet right now. I really doubt we're going to get it. Uh, we've had ugh, kind of a poor assortment of Guppy items lately. There are, that's not true. We've had a poor confluence of Guppy items. Haven't really been able to put three together in a little while, but, um, you know, Guppy's Head and Nine Lives were both uh, pretty integral to our success on recent runs. We got Curse of the Maze going here. We're still ahead of the curve, which honestly, I've got to admit, is a little bit surprising to me. Uh, ahead of the curve time-wise, I mean. I guess we did pick up two early damage upgrades, and that can, that can save you a lot of time. That can put you a couple of minutes ahead of where you normally would be. Uh, and the ability to fly probably don't hurt either. And we'll try to pick up some good... Shit here. We know there's a tears upgrade pill in our rotation. I don't really want to give up rusted key. Lots of pills here. Um, I don't really want to give up rusted key. That's so what we got one tears upgrade. And we've had um I'll tell you what, we'll take the sun for now. But on our deal with the devil, if we can take like two hearts of deals or three hearts of deals, then we could get two HP upgrades from that room. So that's pretty important to remember. But um yeah, we, we've had Liberty Cap so much. I think it's... Liberty Cap is like the, the brimstone mom's knife of trinkets. Not in the sense that it's particularly good, but in the sense that, at least in vanilla context, it showed up all, all the freaking time. So I'm actually like almost self-limiting myself to, to not take Liberty Cap. Not for balance, but just so that I can experience some different trinkets, you know, from time to time. It would be different if Liberty Cap had kind of like a bombastic over-the-top effect that was really cool and, and variable, but... I mean, it is variable, actually, but instead it's just like, hey, this is, you know, like an, a, a slight objective improvement that makes it very easy to take. I'm telling you, those two health down pills in there, I'm very excited by the uh, potential repercussions of them. I don't know if it's going to end up working itself out. I also don't know if uh, I will be able to refrain from pulling out what little remains of my hair as we get fucked by Curse of the Maze. I don't like Nod Leaf very much, but what I will say is that if I did like Nod Leaf, I would like to get Sharp Plug too. If I did like Nod Leaf, I would be pretty into this combination that we've got going on with it because with Gemini and our attack fly, we can pretty much just stand still and kill everything. The only thing I could really ask for is like if we could get an offensive orbital that was a little bit closer to our body, like a. I mean, I don't want to say Revenge Flag because we just had it, but a, a Sacrificial Dagger or something like that so that we could get enemies at, like, a distance and then at a, at a slightly larger distance and then at a very close distance. So we didn't have... And plus, you know, three three orbitals uh, seeking and destroying enemies is a little bit better than uh, one or two. I almost got screwed there as I walked out. I, I was looking down and I didn't notice or I didn't remember that Curse of the Maze is still active here, thereby presenting potentially a little bit of a problem as we walked into a room with enemies when I expected it to be backtracking. All right, this is a big one. Just take my word for it. I, I'm i kind of tempted to just stand below him with Nod Leaf and, and hope that he just chains his brimstone shots endlessly. This is a terrible way to do business 
Yeah, yeah, that's way too slow. It was a, it was an experiment. I was like, if I, can I like monstro to him into only doing one attack that I want him to do? And it seems like the answer is no. Deal with the angel. Come on, come on. I can't take down to uh, health down pills. I mean, I'm happy to have the soul. The soul's pretty good. My favorite of the the Holy Spirit items, though, or the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whatever, is not to not to completely dismiss like the foundation of some religion there, but um, my favorite is actually I don't think I'm gonna get sharp plug. Uh, is actually the body. I think. What are we gonna take with us? Have we been we've been to item room, we've been to shop? We're not gonna be able to get to our. Boss trap room. I think I'm just gonna leave actually. I'm gonna try for. Oh, we've already seen our second secret room. Maybe if we leave, we can ignore the fact that that was a total waste of a bomb. And without a D6, I don't think there's much reason to kill those, uh, those angels there. Anyway, I think it's the mind. The ability to get like all, all mapping, like completely comprehensively right away. It's incredible. Just be careful here. Um, the soul is pretty good. If you're fighting bullet hell enemies, absolutely, I like the soul a lot in that situation. And the body's pretty good most of the time as well, though it does carry that... Ah, yeah, let's reroll our whole run. We got a Joker card as well. Um, we got some kind of charge shot. Oh, we got Cursed Eye! But we do have a Joker card, too. So this is now a very wild one, but, um... You know, Cursed Eye Parasite, if we're doing a decent amount of damage, I'm okay with this. I totally forgot what I was saying now, our run has been completely destroyed. Can't tell if we have, like... Uh, charm shots, or if that's like $3 bill or something. Hey, we got an accidental hermit card. That's a very positive way to think about what's not necessarily a super positive situation. We're very slow. Slow enough that I almost... Oh, we have... That's a leech. Okay. I was like, why do we get lifesteal there? But I think it's just leech doing some damage. Um, it's fear shot, I guess. Thought maybe we had $3 bill, but it doesn't seem like it. This is worse. Um, this, this is a worse situation than the one we were in. But, it does have a higher potential for cool synergies with the, the Parasite pickup, so there is that. You get to keep Rusted Key for better or for worse, anyway. Um, and actually the Joker card is, is a nice touch, even though we will no longer have Book of Belial. Like, that's the principal reason that it's worse, is because we're, I mean, not just Cursed Eye kind of fucking us here, but also the... Uh, the lack of a Book of Belial is pretty bad, but if we can just get like a deal with the devil here naturally, and then also get uh, also get this Joker card used on like the next floors. Oh come on though! All right, this is okay. This is almost. I feel like this is the game being like, yeah, you you like Cursed Eye, and then it gave us Cursed Eye in the last run and almost fucked us. And and by that I mean I pretty much almost fucked myself because I had complete control over it. Eh, it's okay. Um. And then I beat it, and it was like, oh, well, then how about this? And now it's going to give me this one. And if I win with Cursed Eye on this one, I don't know, it's going to give me, like, Soy Milk Cursed Eye, you know, Cricket's Body, Fire Mind, or something like that. If I win on that one, I think it's just going to punch me in the nuts through the screen. But let's let's try to make this happen. I almost just want to use my orbitals to do the damage here. We must have, um, you know, Virgo, or... Uh, I don't think we have Celtic Cross, so we must have Virgo here. Which is actually pretty nice to ensure that all pills... Stay good. Unless I'm missing something, and maybe we just have, like... No, I was going to say maybe we have the Polaroid, but that actually makes no sense. Alright, so... I'm still thinking we just get, like, a full charge and basically only use our orbitals to attack, or... You know, we do have, a, uh, You know, Bobby bob -omb. Don't teleport now, for fuck's sake. There we go. No deal with the devil, so I will use this right away. Okay, uh, I think this is worth taking. Gimpy's pretty good... Dark Matter is pretty good. We already had Fear Shot, so if there was any negative associated with Fear Shot, it really doesn't matter. And I guess this is the kind of floor where, now that we've done what we've done, we should probably just continue exploring. Because we, uh, I'd really like to improve ourselves here. We have less of pretty much everything than we had before. Less damage, less HP. It would be nice to, uh, be able to get ourselves out of this situation. To unfuck it, if you will. Still a few left alive there for sure. You know what? Now that I look at it, I think we we might actually indeed have three dollar bill. We're getting some variable tier effects. Can't say for certain. No, a lot of people will be like, "Well, go look at the stat screen." I've said my piece on the stat screen a few times. I kind of like the the mystery of not knowing what you have after you do a reroll. 
If you want to take inventory of it, that's that's totally fine. It's your prerogative. I don't think it makes you a better or worse player or person for sure. But me personally, I like to I like to kind of play a guessing game and divine it myself. It's part of the reason I like rerolls so much is because you can you know kind of test your knowledge of the mechanics as you go. Not only mechanics but synergies as well. So it was kind of implicit in this uh, decision. Maybe we just have fire mine normally. I, or no, no, I, we don't have fire mine, and I don't think we have three dollar bill. I think that effect is just our tiers are orange because of parasite and then also oh no that one was definitely on fire <laughs> i think or maybe that's just a it, it turned yellow because of fear shot this is so messed up man guppy please guppy please oh i mean we broke even here <sighs> so I, I think dark matter puts that trail on our shots is what i'm trying to get at we got enough bombs we can try this out i don't know what i'm looking for the other thing I really like with uh, these reroll rooms is when you end up getting like duplicates of your lives. So we have like an extra life here, but we don't know what it is. We could come back in the room with Lazarus Tail or <laughs> Lazarus Tail playing too much uh, Monster Hunter. We could come back to life in the room with Lazarus Rags, or we could come back outside of the room with some Spirit Hearts. Might as well take this, I guess. Thanks to the Ankh. Or we could come back outside of the room with uh, one red heart, I guess. Thanks to the one-up. Or maybe that gives us the same amount of HP we had when we died. I don't know if in Rebirth I've ever died with a one-up. Or at least not recently. Or, you know, just to be as annoying as possible, we could respawn outside of the room with two black hearts and a huge damage multiplier as a result of having the Dark Judas or Judas' Shadow upgrade. It's a very, w it's a very g groovy situation, baby. I saw a great uh, Reddit thread. I don't mean to talk to you as if I'm your dad right now, or like your, you know, th your uncle who's three years older than you. It's all a great Reddit thread, buddy. But um, it was like, what things did you not know until you were much older than you should have been? Like you were embarrassed by not knowing it at a young age. Like the number two comment was like, until I was like 30, I didn't know that Mike Myers played both Austin Powers and Doctor Evil, and I laughed my ass off. When I heard that, it's like, because there are people that below it that are like, what? No way. And I, in a way, I have uh, sympathy for it. Not sympathy, but I have an understanding of it. Because, you know, if you were like two when those movies came out and you saw them when you were like nine, I could understand that. But otherwise, like, that that's such like a fundamental part of the movie that it's like a, a fundamental part of the appeal that that's what's hilarious about it. It's like not knowing that in Nutty Professor 2 The Clumps, Eddie Murphy plays everybody. Okay, we're gonna, well not everybody, but Janet Jackson's in it as well. We're gonna reroll our shit again. This we got Triple Shot, Stompy, BBF, we're much faster, Demon Baby, Little Chub. So we got uh, Common Cold. Scorpio shots are a little different. Oh, we have Sad Bombs as well. We also have, um, We have the ability to see everything on this floor, but I'm going to be honest, I don't really know where that came from. <laughs> I'm looking at it, and I'm like, something's not something's not normal about this. All right, with Stompy, we should be crushing all of these whenever we have the available opportunity. This, I think, is a better reroll, and we rerolled our way out of Cursed Eye, which is also pretty valuable for us. So I guess I'm hoping to pick up a, a lot of bombs and maybe some other bomb synergies and some other tier synergies to make, uh, to make Sad Bombs substantially better, but uh, BBF... Plus sad bombs is actually just amazing in and of itself, so I'm very happy for that. Like, we don't have the maps. You know what? We must have re-rolled into the mind, now that I look at it. Because we we got the uh, ability... Oh my god, that's how I... I can tell I'm going to get a Skype message before I even get one. Just because Isaac starts to get slower. Oh, one sec here. There we go. Um, yeah, I think we have to have the mind. Unfortunately, this also means we lost, uh... Well, we lost Gimpy, didn't we? Lost a couple of different things, but, uh... I think this is still substantially better. We'll check out our second secret room. The mind is a really good pickup. Plus, the body can't live without it, according to Morpheus, so... You know, he's not a doctor. I thought that was kind of, like, irresponsible of him, professionally speaking, to give medical advice when he wasn't a doctor. You could actually get sued pretty hard for that, but, uh... I don't know if that's true, by the way. I don't know if you can be sued for giving medical advice if you're not a doctor. Where does the onus fall on that, right? And then my second question after that is, where does the anus fall on that? 
So we must have some spirit hearts here. I mean, I know we picked up a lot recently, but I also didn't... Well, first off, we have Curse of the Unknown, so cut me some goddamn slack, please. Secondly, we just rerolled our whole run with Curse of the Unknown, so I didn't know what our HP situation was like. We should also have Mr. Mega based on our, our mask here. But I don't know if I saw that our bombs were looking particularly larger than they used to be, but if it doesn't matter if they're larger, I guess, as long as they have the effect, because that also affects uh, BBF. I'm looking for the man with Mr. Mega. I'm hoping he can drop some bombs. There's nothing really that rhymes with that. that I want to draw from here. Um, probably should learn to not sing Michael Jackson. You know, he's considered quite widely to be something of a preternatural vocal talent. And so am I, but not in the same way, I suppose. Now... That's what my business card says, actually. Northern Lion, preternatural vocal talent. Also, inability to speak, despite that being his uh, livelihood. Okay, so we do have a deal with the devil, and this is a big moment. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty good. Okay. Um, it shouldn't kill us, but just to make sure, we'll take uh, the mark last. I guess that wouldn't have mattered that much. So this is now, assuming we have more than zero HP, this is a pretty much one run. Uh, we have zero HP. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. Uh, I'm just going to Emperor it up right away and see if we get a deal with the Devil right off the bat. Uh, our damage is going to be crazy. Our rate of fire, not particularly slow. But I'm a little nervous about our HP. That's going to help out very slightly. And more bombs is not bad, considering we have sad bombs. Do sad bombs get, like, the Tammy's head effect? Do they, like, they'll give brimstone when they shoot out? I think the answer is no. Oh, we saw it actually happen. Right there. BBF exploded. And if I hear any comments, well, I'm, obviously there's going to be some comments about this. Not least of which be because I just mentioned it, but there's going to be comments like, Oh, Brimstone, you got carried. You see how many times I rerolled my shit on this run, man? I had to work my ass off for this carry. At what point does it stop being carrying? Oh, you know, Jerry got a good job at the hospital. You know, he got so carried in life. What, what if he was born and, like, you know, he didn't have any fingers, but he went to med school regard? I'm not saying he has to be a surgeon, all right? I'm just trying to pr provide, like, an allegory for a, a, a particularly tough life here. You know, he's the, the child of a Romanian, like, minor. Died when he was very young in an unfortunate accident. Comes to America, doesn't speak the language, learns it in six months. Does very well in high school, goes to college, does very well in college, goes to medical school, does very well in medical school. He spent like, you know, the last 15 years trying to make his life better, he gets a good job, and all of a sudden people are saying he's gotten carried. Obviously, this is me pretty much using the definition of a straw man argument here. However, when you don't think about it, it makes sense, doesn't it? I guess that's kind of the definition of logical fallacies. I'm so sorry! There we go. We, we kept our judgment alive. That's what I was looking for there. Oh, you know what? We, oh, we were very briefly invincible there. I should have gone to play the Demon Judgment. I don't want to take that, actually. Our damage is good. I Sometimes when I get Brimstone, I'm a little bit disappointed or underwhelmed, I should say, by the damage that... Oh, I picked it up by accident. I'm an idiot. Uh, in this case... That is not the case. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with the, the triple shot Brimstone damage that we're doing. And uh, I'm more than that, I'm pleased with the charge time. That's the other piss-off sometimes, is that, you know, when you get triple shot, or any kind of multiple shot, can actually make your life harder than it's worth, but not in this case. Devil is pretty good here. We might as well go as hard as we can on HP. Yeah, so I was actually hoping there would be an Eternal Heart. That was the impetus for that entire uh, aside there, and it ended up working out, so I'm pretty pleased with that. A little concerned about our HP. I took a little bit more damage than I would have liked to have taken uh, towards the end of this floor. That's not going to help. A little dangerous. All right, let's do it. Good enough. I could pop the devil card here. I think it's probably... Ah, oh, that was really bad. I think it's probably more responsible to save it until the Isaac fight. We'll see how our HP looks, though. And again, we've still got sad bombs to fall back on. Not that Brimstone is disappointing me right now. But Sad Bombs might allow me to do uh, a little bit more damage in a pinch, depending on how our HP looks. We can make that decision and as an executive decision when we get a little further ahead here. 
HP is okay. Could obviously be a little bit better. But uh, I, I've made it through worse for sure, and we're quite far away from our boss room. Maybe we'll have a chance to pick up some spirit hearts along the way. I seem to have a pretty good track record with finding... Ooh, I can't fly, right. I seem to have a pretty good track record with finding uh, eternal, or not eternal hearts, but uh, spirit hearts on the cathedral, for whatever reason. Maybe they stand out a little bit more than they do on some other floors, thereby making my uh, terrible eyesight not as much of an issue as it can be in some other situations. This is uh, just classic stupid northern line here, using a bomb when he could just crush the stuff instead. And it's actually a little bit of a sad, uh, this or uh, like a legitimate problem, because with sad bombs, we want to have as many bombs as possible, because they're actually even more so than Brimstone, probably our best damage dealer should we choose to use them. A little bit more cumbersome than Brimstone, and have a finite range, of course, but... It's okay. Alright. This fight is of the utmost importance, because if we don't get carried on the chest, HP-wise, we need to, uh... We need to bring down a little bit of HP, more than that, uh to the chest in order to survive long enough to hopefully get something. I don't know what my luck stat is like right now either. Gotta watch out for the the shots that uh, split when they fall down, like the cricket's body shots as I colloquially call them and then gag in my mouth. Good. It's actually, uh, my, my rate of fire is a little bit lower than I would ex have expected with the Cancer Trinket, even though I was just complimenting it earlier. Now I'm noticing it, since we got, you know, not so much dodging to do. That actually went a little better than I expected overall, though. Now the question becomes, do we have enough to make it through to the, uh, the boss here? And thankfully we didn't get a Curse of the Lost, so we can actually see where we're going. Undefined uh, is, is certainly an interesting choice. $3 bill is more helpful than harmful. My Reflection will help with Sad Bombs, I think, at least. And we'll take on the find with us. I don't mind actually teleporting here. Goathead's not that helpful. But I don't mind teleporting here for a couple of reasons. One being, uh, if we get, we have enough keys to do another um, to do another round of the chest if we teleport to the air room. I'll be totally fine with that. The other one being, and this is exactly what has happened here, they actually teleported us closer to the boss fight, which makes it substantially more likely that my limited amount of HP will be able to, you know, carry me through to it. Don't hate me on this one, but I think I'm gonna. F Ooh, almost walked right into that. I think I'm gonna fight Blue Baby, and then we'll talk about maybe doing the chest one more time. For now, I, I just want to knock out like the obvious end condition for the game. Really should have focused one of them here. Leaving them both alive is not doing me any favors. See, there's what that's what I mean by uh, my reflection helping me out there. In this rare situation, I think it's most important for us to just, uh, just, uh, go for the dream. That was a great homing shot. I can't even be mad about that one. It went across, like, the entire map. Um, and if we can, if we can get this, we, <laughs> we have so little HP left, I really don't want to do undefined. But at the same time, I don't feel like I can justify ending this run without trying it one more time. So we're gonna go do one more uh, two more rooms, technically, to get one more charge. And then, if we get the error room, we'll try to do another chest. And if we die, at least we had fun. Uh, but, I'm not gonna spout any bullshit either, like, Oh, well, we've already won because we beat Blue Baby, because, you know, I'm making the decision right now. If you're gonna take a risk, don't, don't try to, you know, act like you didn't know what you were getting into when it backfires. Just take the responsibility is my philosophy here. So, so far, so good. Okay, let's try it once. I don't think it matters if we start in a special room either. And, okay, we got uh, we got an item, Mom's Pad, but apart from that, nothing. So we're going to leave because I, I think I've pushed my luck as much as I'm comfortable doing. We're going to head down. That's going to be fine. And we're going to have beaten the run. And it wasn't always an easy run, but it was never really that difficult. So I don't know what I'm talking about. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.